with ClearCom. Today we're going to talk about the latest FreeSpeak 2 base and of course the components that go along with it. Now these you're probably familiar with from previous iterations of FreeSpeak 2. You'll probably remember that in our first video we had a quick overview of the FreeSpeak 2 solution. In video 2 we went over things to look for in order to prepare for a new install. Video 3 walked us through choosing some good placement for the transceivers and doing a FreeSpeak 2 site survey. Now in this video, we're going to put the fun in the fundamentals of FreeSpeak 2 and the base station and bring it all together. So let's get started. And of course the components we're using are the transceiver module, the belt packs, either in 2.4 gigahertz version or the 1.9 gigahertz version. And of course we also have the splitter that allows us to take one signal from the back of the transceiver and split it out to five transceiver modules. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, let's talk about the backplane. Over here on your far left, you'll see we have a standard IEC connection. We also have just next to it a connector for 12 volts so you can run this on batteries. There are two slots here for SFPs. In the future, we'll have connectivity to splitters. Just next to that, we have two RJ45s, which you can connect to your transceiver modules. And you can use splitters to come from here, these two, to two splitters. And now you can go up to 10 transceiver modules. Next, we have four XLR connectors, standard three-pin XLRs. These are for two-wire intercom. And then next to that, we have four RJ45s which can connect to four wire circuits either in a matrix or let's say some audio device like a telephone hybrid that has a four wire connection. There's a three pin XLR for a program audio input and a three pin mail for a stage announce output. There are two LAN connections here. They're just loop through so you can go into either one. And finally we have our DB9 which allows us to have GPIOs or relays that we can manipulate through either belt pack buttons or the buttons on the front panel of the base station. So let's now talk about how we're going to plug all this stuff in to the back of the latest FreeSpeak 2 base. Let's start first with power. So we're going to take a standard IEC cord, plug it in right here. Again, if we wanted to, we could use our 12 volt for DC. Now let's take a transceiver plug into the back of the transceiver here with our Cat5 cable and plug right into our number one antenna port. This is a 1.9 antenna transceiver. This is a 2.4 and I can co-locate them on the same system. So I can take another Cat5 cable, plug it into the back of this, and plug this into the second transceiver port and I have a 2.4 and a 1.9 system co-located in the same RF area. Pretty cool, huh? So if I wanted to take my splitter and use that, I could disconnect one of these transceivers, the one that's plugged into the transceiver port number two, plug it into the matrix connection of my splitter, and now I have five extra connections that I can put out to other transceivers. Again, they can be 2.4 or 1.9 co-located on the same splitter. So now what I would do is I'd take another cable, plug it into here, and then plug that into my transceiver. And I have four more spaces here for four more transceivers. So let's talk about a basic connection to a two-wire device. Let's say a two-wire belt pack like this ClearCom RS701. I can connect to it and plug into the back of the base station, let's say into two-wire port number A. If 
from the front panel I can configure it to have power and termination and as you can see the bulb pack lights up and it's fully functional now once I've set it up in the software or from the front panel now this belt pack or a two-wire system that would connect here is part of the system. Of course, you may have a matrix system, either a ClearCom matrix or some other matrix device or any kind of four-wire device that you can come over here and plug into the RJ45s. Again, you have four ports. So let's say at the other end of this, I've got a ClearCom matrix, in the software I would configure it for the pinout for the matrix here. Or, let's say we had a HelixNet base station right on top of it that I wanted to connect to. I could connect via four wire to the HelixNet master station using a standard Cat5 cable. Now let's say I want to connect either to a network or directly connect to my computer, my laptop for example, so that I can control the system from the web-based UI that's contained within this system. I can plug into either LAN connection since they're looped through. Come over here, get my laptop, type in the IP address of this base station in a web browser, which I already know. And it's going to come up with a window that's going to ask me to log in. Admin is the username and admin is the password. Okay, so here we see our overview page. I can see the battery status and connectivity information, which uh, antenna things are connecting to. These are belt packs that are connected. And then I can see down below, I can see all my unassigned but previously registered belt packs. Over on the home page, I can find my, this is the, uh, the IP address of the actual base I'm working on. I can come over here and highlight the name and type in something else, some, any name that I like. And as soon as I check that blue box, Bam, it's done, and that, that's now the, the name of the base. And there are a lot of other features. I can start over-the-air registration here and many, many other things. The FreeSpeak 2 base is very unique in the industry. It has four key sets, so I can use this base station not only to transmit and receive from the belt packs and to interface to other devices, but I can also use it as a headset station so that I can communicate as I like with my systems. So I can take my ClearCom headset with the four pin female XLR, plug it right in over here, put it on, and now I can talk to any of these channels I choose or send a call signal to them. Let's say I want to wake up uh, one of the guys over in the lighting department. I hit the call signal and now all those belt packs, if they've been programmed correctly, will buzz a little bit or a, a signal will go into their headset. And I can select to listen or not listen to a channel. See the LED come on and shows me that I'm listening and I can adjust the volume so that I can have a visual display of the volume for that individual channel. And of course I have a master volume over here on the right hand side. So here's my stage announce button right there so I can use my headset to talk to the stage announce. I can talk to all the channels here that are selected or my remote mic kill which will kill the mics on the belt packs. Now the base station is not only a headset station but it's also a really cool menu operating system. So if I come over here and hit the menu button I have a cascading menu that shows me all the possibilities for programming that are available to us. I'm going to start out with bass audio. I can set my headset levels, side tone, any of that kind of stuff. If I want to have a program input attached to a channel, I can come over here and I can pick out one of our 24 channels and attach it to that channel. I can also change the gain for the input. Same thing for my stage announce. Attach it to a channel, the amount of output gain, etc. If I select the four-wire audio, that's going to show us all the four-wire ports, and I can change the name of the, the label. I can assign that to a channel, one of my 24 channels. And best of all, in port function, I can select whether I'm connecting to a matrix or to another panel or base station. For example, if I'm connecting to a HelixNet base station, with this, the software 
makes the crossover so I don't have to make a physical audio crossover cable to connect from my base station to my HelixNet or other device. Same thing for two wire. I can select which channel I want, etc. Base key assigns. Now this is the base and it has four key sets. This is where I choose which of the 24 channels I want to see on my base station to interact with. Roll assignments are selected here. Same thing with belt pack rolls. All the belt pack rolls that I've set up show up here. Base configuration. This shows me my station ID's name. Again, I can change the name to a custom name so that when my belt packs go to register, they see your company's name right there. In the network area, I can choose either DHCP to enable it or disable it or I can make a static IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway right from here. My base administration is a place where I can do several things with firmware. For example, it shows me what the current firmware is. So if I want to update my firmware on my base station, I just go and grab the firmware file, put it on my stick, put it right in here, and go to update and it'll show me all the different versions that I have on a stick. I can scroll through and pick the one I want, push that button right there and it'll automatically update the base station and the base station will, over the air, update all the belt packs and transceiver modules. Belt pack administration allows me to register belt packs over the air and also I can select a menu access code if I want to lock out menu access to belt packs. I give myself a menu access code so that an operator who knows that code can actually get into the menu of a belt pack that's been locked out. In over the air registration, I push this button to start the over the air registration and it's starting to send an over the air hello code that a belt pack can use to register to this base station. Registered belt packs show me the belt packs that have been registered and it actually shows me there There's a little code that's on each belt pack that shows up here So I can physically look at the belt pack and then see it here It'll also tell me the version of that belt pack so I can be sure that it's up to snuff and Tell me the belt pack type if it's a 1.9 gigahertz belt pack or a 2.4 gigahertz belt pack We've registered before in previous videos to do the test mode but now we're going to actually register belt packs to the base and it's pretty easy. First thing you want to do is in the menu we're going to go to belt pack administration, registration, over the air and hit the over the air start button. Now we're going to go to the belt pack and we're going to turn the belt pack on holding the belt pack on button and then we're going to see it come on and we're going to then hold the menu button. That's the menu button right there and scroll down to where it says System Connect and hit the D to enter and I'm going to unregister it from before. Since the base is on and in a mode to be able to connect because I did the over the air registration button, my, I'm going to first use my right volume control to select the number zero. Remember who said zero, 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 zero is the over the air registration code. Once I've got all those zeros there, I push this button and now I select a role and it says that free, uh, free speak belt pack one is available so I'm going to select that and now I've got my roles set up and there it's all nice and populated now I want to do one other thing while we're here my registered belt pack that belt pack is a 1.9 gig that one is a 1.9 gig that one is a 1.9 gig but that one which I just registered is a 2.4 gigahertz and it shows me each belt pack and which antenna it's going to attach to, the 1.9 or the 2.4. Antenna configuration is our last choice. Let's say I have two antennas in my system. One of them is close to the base station and another one is maybe 100 meters away. Well, I want to be able to, because of deck sync, I want to be able to synchronize the timing of those antenna transceivers so that there's a seamless handoff of the belt packs. 
So let's say we said we wanted to add some length to antenna two because it's got a long cable, a lot of capacitance, impedance, all that kind of stuff. So I go over to antenna two, I go to cable compensation, and I choose 70 to 139 meters, and I select that. Now we're going to have a seamless handoff when our belt pack moves between those two antennas. So over here on the right hand side we see these two status LEDs. The bottom LED shows me that the base station is running and healthy and everything's cool. The top LED shows me that the transceivers are also happy and healthy and cool. But let's just say I disconnect my transceivers. Let's do that. And I come over here and I see that my LED is now turned red. My, my, my antenna health LED has turned red. It's telling me that nobody's plugged in. So if I plug them back up, we will see shortly that the status will come back as soon as I get my data lights on here. I only see power right now, but the data will come up shortly. And it will also follow suit here. We hope this has been helpful and that you've had some fun with us here today. We have great web support and phone support and personal support. If you go to www.clearcom.com, you can find great links to support pages. Also, if you go to our support page, you can find videos in a cleverly marked spot called Videos. We've had a lot of fun doing this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you have any further questions, you can go to www.clearcom.com slash contacts and call or write us for assistance. Also, we have a great app. It's a solution finder. If you go to the support drop-down menu on our website, you can type in your question and get some great answers.